Okay, hi. We're Team Five Second Rule. Um, I, the game we made is called Vain Rivers of Blood, and I'm just gonna go and introduce everyone. Um, this is Kyler, and he worked on the graphics and animations for the game. There's Zach, and he worked on the engine core and the gameplay. There's Mateus, who worked on our AI for the game. There's Amy, who worked on the UI and the controls. And then Sean down there worked on the networking for the game and the sound. And I'm Shazi, and I did the modeling and the art. And uh, I'm Jake. I worked on game engine and overall architecture. So our game is called Vain Rivers of Blood. And the backstory is we have a researcher who works at a bio lab. And one day, he dropped his cookie. But he waited longer than five seconds to pick it up. And it got infected with all these different diseases. So after he ate his cookie, all these diseases are inside his body, and now his white blood cells are kind of going crazy trying to get them out of him. But you are one of the diseases, and you want to live, and you're trying to outrun these white blood cells, and you want to be the surviving disease to infect the human. Uh, can we get uh, two volunteers from the audience to play our game? <laughs> <laughs> right there. Right there. <laughs> So menacing. <laughs> so going down. All right. So right here is our is our selection screen uh, where you can pick uh, from the four uh, bacteria and viruses. Uh, uh, and so you can see here we have malaria, uh, chickenpox, uh, E. coli, and syphilis uh, as our four diseases. You can see they're very cute. These, all these models were designed by Shazzy. Uh, and they're, she had a lot of fun making them, and we worked really hard to get them in the game looking exactly the way she wanted and uh, to match her artistic vision. Um, these beautiful animations are actually, uh, we, we were starting to do uh, some standard animations with bones and rigging, and uh, we decided that because of the sort of the gelatinous nature of uh, a lot of our models, uh, we, could we could instead use uh, vertex shader transformations. Uh, so instead of having uh, rigid bone structures that we can move as animations, uh, Kyla wrote some really awesome uh, vertex shaders that actually just bend and meld the actual triangles that make up the model uh, to get these really cool animations uh, for all of our characters. We're just doing a control explanation. <laughs> for yeah, the so game. We, we actually uh, implemented controls both for keyboard and for uh, controllers. Uh, and so all of our players up here are going to be using the controller because we think it gets a better experience for, for steering. Uh, and uh, as soon as all of our players have selected their characters, the game is going to begin. So in this game, our, our four diseases uh, will be racing down the bloodstream, being chased by white blood cells. Uh, and if, you, if the player in the lead gets too far ahead, the players in the back are going to get left behind and eaten by the white blood cells. Uh, and so you're going to have five lives uh, and if you die five times, you're, you're out, you're dead, uh, and it's last man standing wins, or I guess last, last uh, disease standing wins. All right, and here we go. Here's our countdown, and our diseases are off. So as you can see, we have some uh, angry white blood cells uh, flying down, uh, trying to pin down our players. Uh, to prevent them from moving onward. Uh, there are also some red blood, red, red blood cells just floating around, as they do. Uh, you'll see in the middle of the bloodstream there are uh, some molecules here. Uh, these are adrenaline molecules. And so you can pick one of these up and uh, get a boost for your character. Uh, you also have a bit of built-in boost, as you can see in the top right. Uh, and as a trade-off, when you are boosting, you cannot steer. Uh, so if you're not careful, you can boost yourself right into a corner uh, and get stuck, uh, especially with all the white blood cells trying to pin you down and knock you over and push you back. Uh, and actually in the very back, there's a very, very large white blood cell that's, that's chasing them. And if, uh, if Kyler slows down a bit, uh, we can see this white blood cell because he'll be eaten by it. And there he is. And Kyler got eaten right there. 
Uh, and so he's going to respawn because he has five lives total. You can see in the top left, we have the number of lives for each of our characters. Uh, and we, uh, we can push each other around. We have uh, elastic collisions that are all sphere-based and they bounce off of each other. Uh, there's no particular orientation that is up. You can rotate uh, to have any, any direction be up that you want because you're floating in the fluid of the bloodstream. Uh, and so all the different characters will be facing in different directions. Uh, our, our tube uh, was actually, Kylo worked real hard to generate this tube. He would give it a series of points, uh, and we could generate a curve around these points and vary the radius on these points and uh, generate the model for our tube. Uh, and then have various objects, including the, the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the disease, diseases themselves, <laughs> themselves, be able to follow this track. Uh, so we can have some forces for the fluid of the motion, in addition to the actual propulsion uh, of the boost and other things where the, uh, where the diseases can push themselves down the track. Oh, and on the side, whoever has the most lives is currently shown up top. So malaria is staying strong right now, and chicken pox is, or human's about to be cured of chicken pox pretty soon. Uh, does anybody have any, any questions uh, about the game? Yeah. Uh huh. Oops. Right. So, so spherical collisions are are uh, easier computationally because you're doing less checks. Uh, you just get a distance and radius between two objects rather than checking in three different dimensions. Additionally, uh, when no particular direction is up. Um, it's a lot harder to do bounding, bounding box collisions when these boxes rotate. So as spheres, they can rotate in any orientation, um, and collisions uh, remain simple. Um, additionally, for the two, because it's a circle, we can use radius collisions uh, in much the same way. Uh, the map actually goes in a, in a circle, uh, so you can keep looping until... Uh, until until one one man is still standing. Yep. Oh, the, the, that that effect is the uh, is the collision noise, uh, and there are a lot more collisions than when we first implemented the noise, as the red blood cells and the white blood cells got added, uh, and so it thumps a little bit. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we didn't we didn't we're not using a physics engine. All of our physics uh, is implemented by uh, Matthews and myself. Um, and it's just very basic, you know, force mass physics um, and very simple elastic collisions. Uh, no, we didn't. We didn't need to do a lot of stress testing uh, after we added the white blood cells and the red blood cells. Uh, as they they're limited by the number of players, um, and so we we ran with four players. Uh, we saw it was smooth, and, and we left it at that. Uh, other questions. Uh, so, so the music came from another uh, another game with an open source license. Yeah. Uh, so in, in, in the earlier control scheme, you could turn around and go backwards. Uh, as we have it now, uh, your, your orientation is limited to the forward direction of the tube. Because uh, we found that when you could turn around and go backwards, it got a lot more confusing. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, you do control your speed. So you have a default speed that you just move at when you're not pressing any buttons. Uh, you can press A to boost. Oh, <laughs> there he goes. Uh, you can press A to boost. Um, and you can hold B to break. Like if a uh, you know, white blood cell is about to hit you, you can break and dodge. Um, and then in addition, you also have the adrenaline power-ups, which you can use for extra boost. 
Uh, we, we were originally going to implement uh, more power-ups, including you know uh, projectile power-up, uh, but we, we were limited to just adrenaline uh, based on time. Uh, right now, the, uh, the the big white blood cell of death uh, is just based on the position of the pl of the player in front. Um, the other white blood cells are constantly generated randomly uh, to chase after the players. Yeah. Uh, so the the problem with being able to go full circle and come around is that after you got a certain distance ahead, the other pl the, the the giant white blood cell of death. Uh, would catch up. Oh, it looks like Kyler has died here. Uh, <laughs> lost the action here. Uh, so that if you went all the way around, uh, everyone behind you would have died because the the uh, the large white blood cells position is based off the person in first. <laughs> looks like chicken pox wins. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, more questions, yeah. Uh, so, so they, after they've gotten rid of their target, they just start butting heads, because uh, they, they target each other, and start eating each other. <laughs> uh, and any other questions? All right, cool, thank you very much. All right, that's the show. Thank you very, very much for coming out to, to see what the students have been able to do this quarter. It's really, truly amazing. And so um, before we all head off, I just want to thank all of the students one last time and congratulate them on what they've been able to achieve. All right, everybody, have a great summer. See you, in, see you next year.